Facebook have recently removed the Audience Insights tool. Now this was a really helpful tool for doing things like one, finding new interests for us to target. So we could go into Audience Insights, find a bunch of new interests that we could use to target our ads. And two, we could also use Audience Insights to get a deep dive or more insight into our existing audiences. So we could put in our existing website, custom audiences, our page fans, even customer lists that we uploaded to Audience Insights way back in the day before Cambridge Analytica, and it would give us detailed information about the psychographic and demographic information of those audiences. But now they've gone and replaced Audience Insights with a tool called Facebook Insights, and it's effectively useless. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through some alternatives to the Audience Insights tools. We'll talk about tools that you can use that are all free to find interests to target, and also I'm going to show you one that allows you to still do that deep dive into your existing audiences and get a lot of information about those particular audiences to help you even further with your targeting. All right, let's get into the first one. Before we do, if you enjoy this video, all I ask is that you tap that like button. It makes a huge difference to the channel. And if you wanna hear more from me, hit subscribe and hit that little bell to get notified whenever I release a new video. Okay, so the first one I'm going to show you is actually something that's really helpful, but it surprises me how few people actually use this or how few people know about this and it's Instagram. So let's say I want to target parents. Well, I'll go over to Instagram and I'll enter in either a big parenting website or a influencer that's huge in the parenting space or something that I know is massive that parents are all interested in. So in this case, I'm going to look for parenting.com. I know that's a big website in the space. So I'll type in parenting. We'll go down and we'll find their Instagram page. Great, and I'm going to follow that page. So I'd already followed it, so I unfollowed it. Now I'm going to hit follow. And you can see what happens right away there is it gives me a bunch of suggested Instagram accounts to follow. So not only do I have parenting, but I also have all of these different accounts now. And what I would do is I would then go over to Facebook and I would go to my ad set down to the interest targeting section. And I can type in, of course, parenting.com. And that's going to come up as an interest that I can target. There it is. And I can go back to Instagram and I can look at all of these suggestions and it, I can type those in as well. So for example, positive parenting, let's try that. Okay, so I've got positive parenting solutions and positive parenting toddlers and beyond. So those could both be great interests to target. I can go back to Instagram and I can keep going through this. So we could go Johnson's Baby, which uh, I know is a baby products company. Uh, I could go positive parenting. Uh, I'll just, for this example, I'll use Johnson's Baby. And now I can go back to Instagram and I can continue to kind of go down this rabbit hole. So I could follow one of these accounts. I'm going to do that now. I'll just choose positive parenting and click on their account. I should have clicked on their account before I did that, but that's okay. Click on their account, click follow. And as you can see, that gives me even more suggestions. So I can take those over to the Facebook ad manager and enter those in. So I can continue to do this for as long as I want and get as many different suggestions as I want. Now, in addition to this, I can then go to Facebook and I can essentially do the same thing. So I can go here and I can search for parenting.com in my Facebook search and you can see it comes up as a page. Now you wanna make sure you select the page here. So if you're typing in an influencer's name or the name of a person and they've got a personal Facebook profile and a Facebook page, make sure when you find them, you find their page because you need to follow that page in order to get suggestions. So I'm on parenting.com, I've already clicked like, there we go. And you can see now it gives me suggestions. So I can type in family circle, I could duck back over to the ad manager and I could type in family circle, that's going to come up. And it's going to continue to do that as long as I keep following different pages. So again, you just keep doing this until you get a bunch of suggestions. Now, one thing I will note is both with this Instagram method and using the Facebook suggested method, not everything that shows up is going to be available as an interest to target. Sometimes you're going to type things into the detailed targeting box and it's simply not going to show up. Now, there are a few reasons for this. Sometimes it's just because the page is too small. Like if it's a really small Facebook page or Instagram account, it just won't show up. But other times, really big pages or Instagram accounts don't show up either. So who knows how Facebook decide whether it's going to be available as an interest to target or not. It's kind of a black box. But what you want to do is just type it in, try it and see. So next up, we're going to look at another free tool. Now this one's outside of Facebook and Instagram completely. Uh, but as I said, it's completely free and it's really helpful. And that is SimilarWeb.com. So SimilarWeb allows you to type in any website or app and it gives you a bunch of information about that website or app. The piece that we're particularly interested in is the competitors. So again, if I use parenting.com 
as my example. And just a reminder here, when you're doing this, start with a big website because a big website is more likely to have more data inside SimilarWeb and it's going to give you more suggestions. You'll see what I mean in a second. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get to go down to the competitors section. Now, once I'm in competitors, you can see already, it's given me a bunch of websites that are very similar in this space. So I've got parents.com, babycenter.com, parenthood.com, kids health, a bunch of others here that I can then of course take, pop straight into the Facebook ad manager, or I can roll them over into my Instagram and Facebook method that I just showed you, follow their Instagram accounts and their pages and get even more suggestions. And it just kind of snowballs from there. So I can take this, I might go parents.com and babycenter.com just to show you this example. So baby center, there you go. We can add that to the list and you can continually go and do that. So SimilarWeb is really, really helpful. And in addition to taking these websites and popping them back over in Facebook and Instagram and following their pages, you can also just go back to the top here and maybe just search for some of the websites that were in the results. And that's going to give you again, even more results as competitors. So you go down and you can continue again to recycle this as often as you need to. And it's going to give you a massive list of interest to target. But most importantly, what it's going to do is exactly what we want here, which is give us interests that we might not have necessarily thought of or mightn't have found through our other research. So once you start using those three methods that I've just shown you, there's another way to get a bunch of interests on top of that. Now, we're going to go back over to the ad manager and we're simply going to use the suggestions function. So once you've entered in a few different interests here in your detailed targeting, you can actually just hit suggestions and it's going to give you a bunch of suggestions. And you can see when you do this, it actually tells us the size. So if I hover over, let's say parents magazine, the size of that audience we can see is 26.7 million people. So that's something that Audience Insights used to give us as well. It used to give us an estimated audience size and we can still see that here. What we can't see is that affinity score or that similarity score that Audience Insights used to give us. Unfortunately, there's no way to replace that, but we do have something that's kind of similar that's coming up in the next thing that I'm going to show you. So hang tight for that. But what I would do here and the way I like to set up my interest targeting is I like to organize it into particular categories. So I will have an ad set that targets interests in a particular category or a bunch, and I would do that over multiple ad sets. For example, I would have one ad set that targets websites in the space, and all of the interests that I would pop into that ad set would be different websites. So in this situation, it would be things like parenting.com, parents.com, uh, baby center, and any different websites in that space. Then I would have a separate ad set that might target influencers. So people who have big followings in the parenting space, I would put them in a different ad set. Then I would go and do something like, let's say brands and pop them in a different ad set, maybe particular um, tools or products, put them in a different ad set. And so that's how I like to bunch them. So I would go through and do these things that I've showed you, get the suggestions, bring them here, start putting them into your ad set, and then use Facebook's ad manager suggestions to fill those out even more. And you can see here, it's going to show you things like uh, magazines, it's going to show you general broad interests like breastfeeding, and then it's going to show you even more interests like food and wine. Now that's not an interest I would necessarily try targeting here, but what I would do is for really broad interests like breastfeeding, I would actually put that into its own ad set by itself because it's so huge with 163 million people and it's so broad that it kind of makes sense to put it in its own ad set. All right, so if you do that and spend a bit of time going through each of those four things that I just showed you, that's going to give you a bunch of interests to target. You're going to be able to see the size of each interest and you've also just seen how I set up my ad set so you can bunch them together like that. Now, in addition to that, I mentioned at the start of the video that there is still a way to get a deep dive into your existing audiences to again, learn more about how to target them best. And the way to do that is actually Google. <laughs> so it's Google ads or Google AdWords. So if you go to ads.google.com, set up a Google AdWords account, that's Google's advertising platform. You can actually go into their audience manager and you can use that to help you with your Facebook targeting. So what Facebook has taken away, Google actually still basically provides. So we're just going to use that and then take what we learn over to Facebook ads. Now to get to the audience manager, you log into your Google ads account, click on tools and settings, 
and go to audiences. Now, once you're here, you're able to see a bunch of different audiences here. And if you're brand new, you mightn't see anything yet, but you can create audiences. So you can go up here and create a remarketing list and you can choose website visitors, YouTube users, customer list. I'm gonna show you website visitors as an example. So I might create a new segment and I might say all website visitors. And I've just put in my domain. So any page on my website, if anyone visits that, they'll go into this audience. This is going to give me information on all of my website traffic. Then I can go down and enter duration. So I'm gonna enter the maximum, which is 540 days. And I'm gonna pre-fill the segment here uh, for people in the last 30 days. I'm going to go 540D and I'm going to call it example. Then I hit create segment. Now you can see I've got that audience just here. It's still populating. So I've just created that to show you how to create one, but I can show you inside some that I already had. So if I go down here to all website visitors and I click on that, then I can click on your data insights on the left. And then make sure you've selected the country here that you want insights on. Now you can see down here, I can tell that 53% of my website visitors are male versus 46% female. And you can see here that the main age range is 25 to 34, but down below, I can actually see uh, the different segments. So if I look here, I can see under in-market segments, I've got people in my audience who are interested in CRM solutions, meaning things like HubSpot, ActiveCampaign, uh, Infusionsoft or Keep, all of those different CRMs. Now, if you were looking at this for the first time and you saw CRM solutions and you didn't know what that meant, I would go to Google and I would research what is a CRM, what are CRM solutions, and then you could take that to Facebook and start to enter some of those different CRM solutions or products as interest to target, for example. So I know off the top of my head that, well, Keep and HubSpot and ActiveCampaign are all CRMs. So I would go back over to the ad manager and I could put in, you know, um, HubSpot. This doesn't fit the parenting niche, by the way, so I've gone a little bit off that track here, but see, I can put in HubSpot as an interest if I was targeting my particular audience, which is a business audience. Now, if I wanna go down the parenting niche and show you an example there, uh, I do have an audience on that as well. And that is a YouTube audience. So I can say here, if we've watched any YouTube video, so to do this, I created an audience and I'll go back and show you. I created an audience here based on YouTube users and I picked a channel. Um, we have a different channel in the parenting space and I created an audience that says anyone who's watched any of our videos in the parenting channel uh, goes in this audience. And so I can go back here to data insights. I can choose all of my YouTube viewers who've watched in the last 540 days. I'll just make sure I'm on US here. And I can go down and I can see, okay, they're really interested because this index, the higher the index is, the more interested this audience is in that topic. So 30.4 is huge. I can see that this audience is really interested in strollers and baby carriers. So I could go back to Facebook and I could start to search for stroller and baby carrier brands. I could see if strollers is an interest in itself or baby carriers is an interest in itself and target that. I can go down here and look for infant feeding supplies. I can look for different brands and resources or influences in the feeding space and target those interests. And I can continue down this list to do that. Something else just to note here is if we look at the demographics, we can see that the audience is heavily skewed to females in this case, 25 to 34. And well, strangely enough, 52% are parents, but 47% actually aren't parents. So that surprises me. I would have gone and thought in Facebook, if I target all parents, that's going to be a good way to target. But this tells me that maybe that's not the case. Maybe I'm best to target strollers and baby carriers, uh, infant feeding supplies, baby and toddler apparel brands. And that could simply be because a lot of the people who are following this particular channel aren't parents yet. They're preparing to be parents. So with my Facebook ads, I would be best to not target parents, but to target these brands because they're not yet parents in all cases. Now, the one last thing I wanna show you in this that's really powerful as well is uploading a customer list. If you have a big list of customers already, or even a list of leads, you can upload them to Google if you meet certain criteria. So the ability to upload a list to Google AdWords and target them or to see this information is limited to those who've spent $50,000 or more in their Google Ads account. So it is limited if you wanna upload lists directly, 
but it's still possible and I still think it's worth showing. And if you wanted to upload that email list of customers, you would simply click here, you would click customer list, upload that list, then you would go back into data insights and select the list. So really quick and easy to do from there as well. Now there is one more audience type that I think you really should still be paying attention to now that Audience Insight is gone, and that is the lookalike audience. These are still really effective, really powerful audiences that you can target. And even though our interest targeting ability might be slightly diminished without Audience Insights, you can still use lookalikes very effectively. And this is a huge topic. So what I've done, created a new video that you can check out right here that shows you how to create lookalike audiences. And it will also show you my favorite lookalike audiences to target right now. So go ahead, check out that video. Hope you've enjoyed this one. Till next time, I'll talk to you soon. Bye.